All right, it's officially re-zero marathons for us, and we're going to cover the cut content as well, not just from any news. If you guys have any suggestions on other re-zero content that's spoiler-free that we can cover on an episode-by-episode -episode basis, let me know. Let's check it out. Re-zero is a very faithful adaptation to the novel it's based off of, even more so now with the director's cut airing this season. But Wah! as it is with many... Bro, again... I bet 99% of people who watch ReZero only watch the original or the Blu-ray. And the people that glaze the director's cut have no fucking idea what they're even talking about. And the people that do know what they're talking about are just hyping up the most minor fucking changes when the endings gets botched due to them not using the impactful soundtracks. What is up with the people glazing the director's cut? The more research I do, the more I realize that this shit's fucking trash. There's cut airing this season. But as it is with many light novel adaptations, no matter how faithful, there will always be minor details and brief scenes or dialogue that have yes, to be sir. cut out. Some may serve to explain the lore, while others may help to develop characters. In ReZero- This guy here? Where is he? This guy's Reinhardt, right? Haven't seen ReZero, but I've heard many things about this. And anytime there's a character powerless, tierless, bro, power scaling tierless, bro, this motherfucker's there. This dude, how exactly strong? I think even in like Eminence in Shadow, episode 5 reaction, I compared him and Sid Kagano. This motherfucker, like, doesn't he have an insane fucking attack? Characters. In ReZero's case, it's a mix of both. And I figure you may be interested in learning more about this fascinating story of equal parts suffering and determination. So mm. let's go through everything that was skipped from the original ReZero story in this brand new cut content series. Damn, look at the cover picture art, bro. Hey, it's Amelia Dark Mode. <laughs> dark Mode Amelia? Light Mode Amelia? Dark Mode Amelia? I, I, dark Mode Amelia? This looks really fucking nice. Now I know they're not the fucking same characters, but goddamn, the similarities are insane. Let's begin. Episode 1. The end of the beginning and the beginning of the end, covering mm. chapters 1 to 3 from the first volume of the light novel. And that's the most interesting thing, the beginning of the end and the end of the beginning, right? Just how Subaru gets reincarnated, and just like how he was dying with Amelia in that bar, as he dies, he reaches out and says, I'll save you, right? It just feels like everything happened at that moment. The beginning of the end for Subaru to get isekai, and end of the beginning where he died and, you know, fucking regressed it's just i feel like that point is such an important part of everything about this show and how he even got the powers or how he even became to be at the beginning of the story subaru had already been isekai and it's here that we learn a bit more about who he is or rather who he was back in the real world he seems to be he's an interesting guy because most um, isekai neats are super introverted and have no fucking social skills and just fucking losers but this guy, despite being a neat, he confidently talks to people. He acts like an extrovert. He also metagames everything, even reading the manga here, the shoujo manga. He's talking like, oh, this is the part where the cliche is going to happen. So clearly he's very well versed in that. But his overall personality is pretty interesting in the sense that he is very extroverted. And he treats his new isekai journey as a literal game. And... I'm not sure if he's gonna be cap sorry, I'm not sure if he's gonna be so casual anymore after Elsa just like gutted him and then started to poke at his guts and said, Are you having fun? Are you scared, right? After that moment, I wonder if his outlook on this Isekai journey is gonna change or not. At the time of being sent to the New World, he was just a completely ordinary 17-year-old from a middle class family in Japan. Venturing towards the end of his third <laughs> Yo, one of these days, one of these the Isekai Quartet will happen. This is funny because this is Ainz, right? His entire fu he's so wide in that fucking chair, bro. Here of high school, but <laughs> oh, Subaru is over there. Uh, Konosuba Squad. I think this is Re Zero Squad over here. Yeah, who has the main character spot? Who has the main character spot in the aisles here? Um, this armor guy maybe? I don't know. I don't know who these dudes are in green. His third year of high school, but not very likely to show up to any classes. You see, Subaru was at the point in his life where he needed to dis- Yo, Subaru and Kazuma best friends? I don't know. I really enjoy Kazuma as an isekai character though. ...decide whether he wanted to go to university or jump straight into the workforce. Neither- Both are gonna be- Like, both are tracksuit heroes, bro. 
But I, I know Subaru got a new drip now. He doesn't wear his tracksuit anymore. I wonder if Subaru will ever get like a drip like this. More like a, you know, a, a clothing that may retain the color scheme, but is a little bit more not modern. It's not just a fucking Adidas tracksuit, you know? Or jump straight into the workforce, neither of which he was really a fan of. He had the tendency to make up excuses and run away from the things he didn't like, resulting in him inadvertently becoming a truant teenager. That isolated lifestyle didn't really matter anymore though since now he was summoned to another world, yeah. something Subaru almost immediately picked up on after noting the new location he found himself in. And if he's so, so fast with this, how the fuck did he die twice and get... He still doesn't know he's regressing. The first iteration I told you in the episode 1 reaction, I get it. It's a shock. It's brand new. I can believe that. Second time, bro? Are you serious? And he goes out and calls Amelia a slur? It's not his fault. He doesn't know. But like... I, like if you were so fast to catch on the different tropes and the different manga shit, and you immediately knew this was an isekai shit, you would think by the second iteration that he would be, you know, fast with it. But I guess because he's not, it did create for an interesting situation where I treat every, uh, I treat every resurrection. I'm not sure if it's caught well, quite right to call it re resurrection. I treat every iteration of a regression as like a speed run. And right now, this speed run is fucking botched. Like, Amelia hates us. We should just die and restart. And surprisingly, he was completely fine with it. Just like now, Fumi from Shield Hero or Hajime from Arifuretta, Subaru was an otaku. And his familiarity with isekai type stories made his transition to the new world that much smoother. However, he was a bit concerned that he was lacking the fundamental safety net that most isekai protagonists have. Yeah, where's my like OP power? Like some powerful weapon or OP magic to help him through his journey. He doesn't know how to use magic yet because the episode said something about in order to use magic, you need to have your gate working. It's some kind of mechanic that was briefly explained, but obviously he doesn't have that yet. There's the media, right? Media is supposed to use, be used as like a, a tool for people that can't use magic. And then, obviously his regression is the power. But like, when did he acquire the regression? And that's the thing, the beginning of the end and the end of the beginning. It's very ambiguous because as he was in this, you know, the fucking 7-Eleven, he was also dying, right? That was happening at the same fucking time. So, did he die and then he regressed and he, that was the first checkpoint? But he already got, it's the chicken and the egg scenario. How did he already get there? I don't fucking know. I just... My still guess is, when Amelia died, and he reached out and said, I'll save you no matter what, he made a wish with the devil, in a metaphorical sense, got the regression powers, and now he's just doing this, and how this all cycles of beginning of the end and end of the beginning. All he had was the clothes on his back, his cell phone and wallet, and his groceries of ramen and chips. Yeah. So, to Subaru, this wasn't the greatest new beginning. But, given the situation he was in, he still knew what his priorities were. The first was to find a way to communicate with the townsfolk, and the second was to determine how to use the currency. He can't read, but they can communicate fine. The communication issue was resolved rather easily, though the exact details on how Subaru was able to communicate with everyone wasn't quite specified. Then, thanks to a nearby merchant, Intentionally, or for convenience sakes, because in Isekai, you know, it's like, are we going to go through a whole language translation skill, or are we just going to say, yeah, he just can speak to them, it doesn't really matter, but he can't read. I feel like that's intentional. He was able to learn that currency is traded in the form of gold, silver, and copper coins. Now, Subaru was planning to explore the town, but on his way to the main road, he bumped into some thugs, and they dragged him into the back. Thugs! Alley. As we saw, he was still of the mindset that this was a typical Isekai story. So and he got me. He got me good, bro. He punched them, and it was like pretty fucking good, man. Like the kick and the punch. Like I'm like, whoa, he can fight, man. Logically, he thought he should have some sort of power that would help him get out of this situation. That thought made him feel as if his body got lighter. He felt as if this world's gravity was a tenth of Earth's gravity, and this gave him the excuse me, excuse me. He felt as if this world's gravity was a tenth of Earth's gravity. Huh. So it's not just the fact that he was well built at home, but one tenth of the gravity here, because he's it's, it's like a physical some kind of buff he got just by being isekai. That's interesting. Out of the situation, that thought made him feel as if his body got lighter. He 
He thought it was. Is it real though? It felt as if this world's gravity was a tenth of Earth's gravity, and this gave him the confidence to make the first hit. Yeah, he thought it, but he's obviously feeling it. Even if he's thinking it, he's experiencing it. One tenth? That's kind of crazy. Like, regardless if it's wet one tenth or not, it doesn't matter. He's still moving at that rate where he, he probably couldn't back at home. This is very ambiguous. He's saying that shit. He's moving like it. I don't know because I don't know what he was like back on Earth. But the situation quickly turned when one of the thugs pulled out his knives. And we Fortunately give up. for him, Felt would run down this alley before any serious damage could be done. Subaru could sense a strong will from her eyes. And because of that, he thought for sure that she would have an overflowing sense of justice. Nah, we just trying to survive out here in the slums. Live strong, brother. Good luck. But that didn't seem to be the case when she simply passed him by. No, help would come from Amelia who made her appearance shortly after. Her mature demeanor and intelligent eyes emitted a noble air that gave her a bewitching charm. Super- <laughs> Get it? Bewitching charm? Witch of envy? Seven deadly sins? Subaru is- Prideful? I don't know, there's, there's a lot of interesting wording being used. Subaru finally understood what it meant when people would say time stood still. Because, for him, he was experiencing that phenomenon right now. Love at first sight? Now, even though he was enthralled by this beautiful girl, when Amelia used her magic to take out the thugs, he wasn't really impressed by what he saw. He ex- I ain't gonna lie, the- The ice- I mean, it's not like she used anything special. They're like random fucking, you know, NPC thugs, man. She just used like ice pebbles on them. It's not supposed to be impressive, I don't think. That did something more fantastical and vibrant. But instead, all he saw was lumps of ice materialize yeah, ice and pebbles. vanish. There wasn't even an incantation. It was as if there was no feeling- Because spirit arts. I don't know what the, how the magic system works in this show, right? We know Mushoku Tensei about the importance of incantation list because everyone is held back by the incantations. But Amelia is a spirit arts user. Maybe Puck kind of like abstracts that incantation layer away and she can use ice powers without chanting? ...or emotion put into it. Regardless, it was that plus Puck's presence that made the thugs back off. So okay. Subaru didn't really have room to complain. He then passed out for about 10 minutes. After waking up, Amelia gave her... I thought this was Amelia in a fursuit. <laughs> I genuinely thought... Like, Jesus Christ. And doesn't it... Didn't Puck say it's very tiresome to be in this, like, physical form? So Puck increasing his size to troll Subaru here basically meant that Puck used even more of whatever resource required to maintain this form. And by the end of this night where Puck had to go away, it's Subaru's fault. This lap pillow cost them an extra hour, and that extra hour could have saved Subaru and Amelia. <laughs> nah, I'm reaching. Up. Amelia gave her whole excuse as to why Subaru shouldn't feel indebted to her. But the fact that she stopped chasing Belt, fought the thugs, and even healed his wounds allowed Subaru to get a feel for the type of person she was. She seems to be like this very elegant, noble, dignified person who doesn't want to owe anyone anything, makes excuses to kind of help out, saying that <laughs> I'm doing this for my sake. That's a little bit of childishness even though you say she's mature, right? What else is she like? She treats Subaru like a kid. I think we literally got, like, sun-zoned. She feels like a mom. In this moment, when we were doing indirect handholding, Subaru was so, so, talking something like, Wow, it feels like, you know, we're a couple right now. And she's like, Huh? What do you mean? You're a child. I'm fucking... You're basically the girl's, like, brother. And, and, and she has an ins insignia. For whatever reason, there must be some sort of backing from a powerful faction because she says she's broke, but she has an insignia, which is so valuable that multiple people have hired multiple clients to steal and negotiate. That seems to be Amelia's character so far, right? I don't think she even sees Subaru as a man. He's a child to her. She's just basically trying to get insignia back. But even if... Her goal is on the line. She's willing to make detours to help people out because she's just that good of a person. So like her personal desires are like set apart, set aside for the good of this world. She's just an angel so far. If she would do that for him, then it's likely she would go out of her way for anyone. Doing things that would constantly end up with her getting the short end of the stick, mm. always coming up negative. In that case, she'd just keep losing until there was nothing left. And Remember what Subaru said? A girl like that is gonna keep suffering. But why did he say that? 
unless he is so aware of these kind of archetypes of characters in the manga he read, and that's how he's empathizing, or maybe that's how he used to live, you know? Like, people that say shit like this only say it because that's how they used to live, and they've changed themselves, and they see their past selves in other people. And then they're like, it makes them mad, right? That's half the reason I'm fucking pissed off watching too many losing heroines. Any of these goddamn bullshit rom-com shows where these motherfuckers are so dumb and stupid. I'm just like, oh my god, bro. It's just like, I was there. I know this and I know how to fix it. But it's just like, you get mad because you see the same people repeating your mistakes. I'm not sure if that's what's going on here with Subaru and Amelia, though. That was something Subaru wasn't willing to accept. So, as we saw... Subaru offers his services to Amelia in order to help her find her insignia. The two would investigate for an hour before finding themselves up another alley with a dead end. Subaru states that how even with all his experience, he didn't think that it would be that difficult. It's with this comment that Amelia first witnesses Subaru's pride. Yeah, pride here. Again, your fucking experience? Experience doing what? And hear it again. Be that difficult. Yeah. It's with this comment that Amelia first witnesses Subaru's pride. Witch of Envy, Pride, two seven deadly sins mentioned in episode one. If there's a Witch of Envy, is there a Witch of Pride? Is Subaru the Witch of Pride? I think a Witch is reserved for girls, right? I don't think it works like that. But I'll be keeping that, I'll be keeping that in my head. A very important bookmark. These words like Envy, Lust, Greed... Wrath, Pride, you know, the seven deadly shits. It's like, clearly they're trying to tell us that Subaru... Prideful. I mean, Aninius is not helping me by just repeating, Subaru has pride. Emily is very bewitching. Yeah, I get it, bro. I get it. Thank you. Thank you for that note. She couldn't help but glare at him and his seemingly high opinion of himself. Okay. But how did they even get lost in the first place? Well, as it would turn out, both had full confidence that the other knew where they were going. It was rather comedic, actually. Both... How the fuck would this guy know where he's going? He's brand new here. How the hell does she not know? Because this area is foreign to her? Maybe she lives somewhere else. Amelia and Subaru thought that the other was familiar with the area. But obviously Subaru had no clue and Amelia wasn't from this city. It also didn't help that Subaru had no idea what any of the signs around the city said. So realizing that they were getting nowhere, Amelia takes a moment to try to communicate with some lesser spirits. Hey, this happened in the bridge. After Subaru was told that, like, we, we got to learn about the lesser spirits and how they basically don't have the EXP to evolve into full spirits like Puck, right? This is, I guess this happened in the alleyway instead of a bridge 1v1. The bridge scene was very beautiful. Beings that are in a state prior to becoming real spirits. They're not quite self-aware like Puck, but with time they'll develop an increasing amount of knowledge and power. We don't know much of the, about spirits other than that, but, like, I wonder why Subaru is, like, so good with spirits. There's, like, a... Like, p most people don't, can't just, like, touch Puck and just interact like that. And then Emilia made the comment of, like, you know, damn, you're pretty good with spirits. So, like, Subaru is, maybe he'll learn spiritual arts? I don't know, but, like, spirits seems to like him. They're drawn to him? Subaru, witnessing this event for the first time, decides that it would be a good idea to interrupt. Of course, that just caused the spirits to panic and disappear. <laughs> Amelia became frustrated because had he interrupted a less experienced spirit mage, then the spirits could very well have attacked him. Yet what? Subaru couldn't understand how something so cute could be so dangerous. It was only after Puck told him that he could reduce him to a pile of dust in a matter of seconds that Subaru understood that maybe he shouldn't be messing with them. Puck does seem very strong, right? I mean, it's a small little cat, but I'm just gonna assume that Puck I don't know, like a cute cat like this, it's, it's like the main heroine's fucking familiar, maybe not accurate to call familiar, but a, a spirit, like, I'm just gonna assume that Puck is stupidly strong and we haven't really gotten there yet. Anyway, what Amelia was trying to do was get answers from the lesser spirits, but in order to make Hey retards, shut the fuck up. How much do I have to act like I didn't see anything to make sure that we're doing the right fucking thing? And you idiots directly fucking confirm the spoilers. Are you that stupid and slow? You must be if you're still typing that shit. Just shut the fuck up and let it play through. Subaru feel less, well, stupid. She mentioned that she didn't expect to get many answers from them anyway. That just made Subaru feel worse since now he was being more of a hindrance than helpful. Amelia being his only meaningful connection to this world meant that he had to do everything in his power to maintain that relationship. And right now, he wasn't doing a very good job of it. 
This leads into when everyone finally introduces themselves. That pose. Subaru's introduction made a- That pose is more zesty in the anime. The amount of hip being thrown out in the anime, bro. Produces themselves. <laughs> that, that hip sticking out. What is this pose, bro? What the fuck is this pose? Subaru's introduction. Yeah, not, not much hip, you know, sticking out here, but pretty good still, pretty good. Production made Amelia realize that perhaps Subaru actually had no clue where he was. Yeah. But that was weird to her because he didn't carry any of the traits of a commoner or a peasant. Yeah, hikikikomori, right? Wow. Your muscles are pretty well defined and it's not like muscles that you would get by being out in the fucking rice fields. Wow, your skin is so fair. Means like you don't do labor jobs outside. You must be, you know, upper class, Subaru. Hikikikomori, huh? Shut in neats? Wow, must be a must be from a great family. Everything from his build, skin, and hair to the very clothes he was wearing gave off the air that he'd been living a life of luxury. Well, relatively speaking anyway. Wondering if that was the case, Subaru had to tell her that she was completely wrong. When she asked for his reasoning, he determined that saying he was isekai would just set a precedent for him to be labeled as a crazy person. So, not wanting to risk the chance of severing his one and only relationship, he decided not to say anything at all. This has a- Right. Anytime- Very rarely do we ever tell people in an isekai show that we are an isekai character. Mushoku Tensei, has Rudy told many people? Who has Rudy told other than Nana Hoshi? I mean, he hasn't even told, like, Sophie, right? I don't think Sophie knows, right? Anyways, I wonder if that's gonna happen with Super would be like, Hey, Amelia, <laughs> I'm an isekai character. <laughs> yeah. Amelia's gonna be an isekai. Oh, is, is that, you know, the other thing with Hikikomori? Meditation caused Amelia to back off as if she had pride into something that she shouldn't have. Subaru did feel bad for not telling her, but Amelia was able to acknowledge that it was something that he couldn't talk about. When Subaru asked for her name next, Amelia went a bit quiet as she hesitantly Satella. gave the name Satella. Subaru could sense- Satella, Nutella, or Nutella. Is it Nutella or Nutella? Satella, Sat, it's the same shit. Why she do that? Uh, by the end of episode one, it's supposed to be the Witch of Envy's name and it's supposed to be a slur, right? And why would she say that to him? A test? A test to do what? To see if he even knows the lore of the Witch of Envy? Okay, he doesn't know. What does that mean? That he's a good person? I don't know. Clearly there's a lot of prejudice for the Witch of Envy. And for whatever reason, she also mentioned the half-elf too. I'm just gonna assume Satella is a fucking half-elf. Emilia is a half-elf. The fucking comparison here, right? is why she got so fucking pissed off and why the people around the traffic at the end of episode 1 were like, no shot, you just called us silver-haired half-elf Satella, right? That must be what's going on. Opening 3 also depicts a girl that looks like Amelia hugging, wrapping Subaru behind the arms after a dark hand appears, which is probably Satella, right? So like, he says this and he doesn't know and she almost like gets rizzed up because he accepted her even though she is this taboo i just don't know if this is her testing of his ignorance or if it's like even if i am will you accept me kind of deal he said this was a name that she didn't seem to like so he decided not to call her that at all but now it felt like she had placed a significant gap between them so the two quietly returned to the main road and wandered for another 10 minutes before coming across the little girl in a situation like this, Subaru couldn't help but feel that Amelia would completely drop everything she was doing and go assist this helpless That's child. That's what she did. You see, throughout the day, Subaru had noticed something about Amelia. She was the type of person who was too kind for her own good. And Subaru knew that the more time they spent on other things, the less likely it would be that they could retrieve the insignia. Amelia knew Subaru had a point, but she still just couldn't ignore this girl. So after finding the girl's mom, then having their little heartwarming conversation on the bridge, they finally brainstorm what their next steps should be. I mean, it still paid off, right? The karma kind of paid off. We got lucky, for sure. Is that always going to happen? Who knows? But just more characterization of how good of a person she is. Given that they were in the largest city in the nation, one that holds a population of over 300,000 demi-humans and humans alike. Damn. Okay. 
So we are in the capital of this nation right now? Capital city of nation of what? They were in the largest city in the nation. Largest city in this nation. 300,000 people. What's at the top of the castle? Who knows? One that holds a population of over 300,000 demi-humans and humans alike. It's no wonder that they kept getting lost. And because they had spent an hour searching already, they didn't really have the luxury of making any more errors. Subaru figured the best approach now would be to just return to where the insignia was stolen. That way, they could question any potential witnesses. Lucky for them, the Apple salesman was able to point them in the direction of a place True. in the slums known as the Loot Cellar. That was the place to go if they were looking for stolen goods. 30 minutes passed walking from the inner city to the slums. When they got there, Subaru expected their presence to attract trouble. But instead, the people there were actually really nice to him. Yeah, you would think that if you go to the slums like this, like you'd get your all your shit stolen, right? You can't have, you can't flex like, like nice clothes or like even like this, like just like waving an iPhone around in these kind of slums. Like you're a prime target, bro. That's just gonna get robbed. But here, I guess the culture is different. Everyone says live strong in the slums. Subaru assumed that it was because of his charm, but no. Amelia points out that it's probably because of how disheveled he looked. Okay, never mind. I didn't realize he was this messy in the anime. In the manga, or the light novel here, the manga, he looks very messy. I mean, after his beating, Subaru had all this blood and dirt on his clothes, so he pretty- I guess he is a little scuffed up in the anime, but it was not enough for me to think that he looked like that. Pretty much fit right in. On the other hand, Amelia's affluent appearance made her receive the opposite kind of treatment. No one would even give her the time of day. This meant that Subaru was finally able to help out since the people of the slums were only willing to talk with him. Wow, being At useful! Point, two hours had gone by since Subaru first met Amelia, and the sun was starting to set in the distance. As we know, Puck only has enough mana to manifest himself out of his crystal vast. 9 to 5, usually. But again, I wonder if the transformation into the big Puck for the memes there when he woke up at the lap pillow kind of like shortened that so from the hours of nine to five meaning amelia now knew that she had to take the vanguard since subaru was so visibly weak mm. it did hurt when she called him out as weak but subaru knew that that was the you only are way weak she could though phrase it since he could tell that she wasn't very good at hiding how she truly felt you see even though he'd only met her a couple of hours ago it felt as if he'd known amelia for much longer already he was able to pick up on these minor traits in her personality why? Because he's... Because this is not the first time he's met her. Because regression... I don't know. Everything goes back to regression. Everything goes back to... We've already met each other and kind of know each other. And then memory got wiped to regression. I don't fucking know. Unfortunately, the same couldn't be said for Amelia. Or maybe that's just him acting like he knows her without even knowing her because he read a lot of manga about elves and now he's thinking like we're so close i'm not sure maybe either or i, I like the regression idea but like then why wouldn't amelia know because amelia is not the one that gave him the powers i don't know everything goes back to that scene where he tried to make the promise Hmm. Maybe it's just his personality. It's just like a flawed personality where he acts like he's closer to people. I mean... <sighs> some people do act like that. Where they, as soon as they meet, they start acting friendly and being like really casual and starting to make banter. And the other side's like, what the fuck? I barely even know you. And, it's, and it just comes off wrong. Her first impressions of Subaru weren't entirely positive. Anyway, Subaru manages to figure out the whereabouts of this loot seller. It was in the deepest part of the slums. Like, you remember Cautious Hero? I remember Cautious Hero and, it, 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 you know, the first Isekai, yeah, they knew. But then after the reincarnation, you know, it's like their memory got wiped and then they go again. But then there's like this residual memory, even though the memories got wiped, that they kind of know each other. But that's bi-directional. It's not one way, it's bi-directional. I don't fucking know. Built against a tall defensive wall that served to mark the city's borders. Turns out, Subaru and Amelia had traveled all the way from the city center to its very edge. Normally, it wouldn't have taken them three to four hours to get there, but because of everything they'd already gone through, that's how long had passed. As Subaru opened the door to go in, he was quickly overwhelmed by the dark interior. Amelia had to give him a white crystal to use as a flashlight. It was a common mineral known as Lagmite Ore. 
But before fully entering the cellar, Subaru would refer to Amelia Esatella for the first time. Ooh. Up until now, he had been avoiding her name because of how she seemed to feel about it earlier. Even now, he felt a bit bad for calling her it. But this time, he finally worked up the courage to say it. Amelia was taken aback for a second. The only thing she could say in response was that she'd apologize to him after. Unsure as to what exactly she The apology is because she's lying to him about her fake name. And every time he calls her Satella without any prejudice, I think she's getting rizzed. She'd apologize for. He says he'd prefer her to just properly thank him with a smile. This flustered Amelia even more. But to Subaru's surprise, she decided to put on a genuine look of gratitude. This yeah. was the first time that Subaru had gotten Amelia to smile. And he made sure to burn that image into his memory. And then they died. Now, Subaru entering the shop then dying for the first time was pretty much the same in all adaptations. So after restarting, his initial confusion turned to panic when his thoughts became overwhelmed with those of Amelia and Puck. He thought that if someone- I wish that any news would talk about that specific scene when he's about dying, and how that relates to the intro of the anime episode 1, when he's in the very mart. But here's the thing, maybe I'd have to check the manga out. Did the manga also do it the same way, where the events of him dying with Amelia is being overlapped with him at 7-Eleven and as he reaches, like, did, did the manga do the same shit? The manga is behind the anime? Motherfucker, this is chapter one. <laughs> Motherfucker, this is chapter one. What are you fucking talking about? The light novel didn't? Okay, that's interesting. Light novel, I'm gonna assume the light novel is the, like the, well, no, I hear it, there's a web novel as well, but I'm gonna assume the light novel is just as faithful. The light novel didn't. But the anime portrayed it as if it was happening in tandem. Almost like this circular loop of sh shit's happening, and I don't know, the time, pa flow of passage of time is different, and, you know, this shit was happening at the same time, fucking 7-Eleven uh, shit was happening, then made the deal with the fucking Witch of Envy, and now he got fucking regression, is like what it seems to be telling us, right? Because if, if Satella is the Witch of Envy, right? And if that being, right, is the one that he, the devil, that he made the, you know, uh, the, the wish with, as he's saying to protect her forever, and that's how he gets the regression power? That, I could see happening. Subaru entering the shop then dying for the first time was pretty much the same in all adaptations. Yeah. So after restarting, his initial confusion turned to panic when his thoughts became overwhelmed with those of Amelia and Puck. He thought that if someone as weak and unimportant as him could still be alive, then for sure Puck and Amelia had to be. He was overcome by a sense of urgency that far surpassed anything he'd ever experienced in his in I get it, right? The sense of urgency. And look at it. Dark Hand again. Whenever I see Dark Hand, I just think Witch of Envy because of opening three. Because I saw Dark Hand and then Satala appear. Asked anything he'd ever experienced in his entire life. Every decision he's ever made in the past paled in comparison to the actions that he had to take now. For sure, and I can completely understand why he does not think that he is regressing at this point. Totally reasonable, totally fair. We as the audience, we're backseating. Of course we fucking know. But to him living it out, I can understand. But motherfucker, motherfucker, the second iteration when he literally got tortured by Elsa, you tell me those memories aren't fresh? You tell me that you just spawned in front of the Apaga again? Come on, man. That's just how important finding Amelia was to him. It took him two whole hours, but he was eventually able to find his way back to the loot cellar, arriving approximately two hours earlier than the first time. If he actually knew where he was going, then he would have gotten there even faster. But remember, he couldn't read any of the signs. His only guide was the recollection of various landmarks, which frankly wasn't That's even fair. very helpful considering that most of the time in his last life was spent staring at Amelia. Anyway, after knocking on the door, the old man Rom opened it with such force that it sent Subaru flying backward. He was then manhandled and grilled until deemed completely harmless, after which Rom was kind enough to let him in, hear what he had to say, and even insist that Subaru should join him for a drink because of how tense he looked. Initially, Subaru I love old man Rom. I hope he survives. He's died every time. But I hope the good run where everyone, like we beat Elsa, I hope old man Rom survives. Refused, since technically he was still a minor. But Rom's persistence was so overwhelming that Subaru felt as if he had no choice. It wasn't really something he enjoyed, but it did help to ease a bit of the tension he was feeling. This allowed him to tell Rom- ReZero condones underage drinking. Oh my god, this is just as bad as Mushoku Tensei, guys. 
Remember when Julie was drinking alcohol? Oh my god, cancel ReZero. All the details behind what and who he was looking for, even stating that he was ready to trade his own possessions for the insignia, but not with the chips he first brought out. Subaru went straight for his cell phone, leading to the whole media discussion now rather than later. If you don't recall, media were devices that allow its users to use magic without the need for opening a gate. That's right. You see, normal magic users have to pass their mana through a gate in order to give it a form that has an effect on reality. And Subaru has no gate right now, or can't use it if he has one. I'm gonna assume everyone has one, it's just the gate hasn't been like activated or something. When someone is incapable of opening that gate, the media serves to do just that, cool. essentially allowing non-magic users to use magic. As for magic itself, well, that's a whole other topic that will be explored further as the story progresses. So after seeing the cell phone, Rom was pretty confident Subaru could fetch a far greater price for it than the insignia, so all he had to do was wait for Felt and make the trade. When Felt finally arrived, she was a lot less welcoming in the novels. She was wholly skeptical of Subaru and his offer. She even thought that maybe Rom had sold her out. I mean, she had told Rom- I just want you to, in chat, just remember, like every time you think you're being funny by saying who is Rem or cat girl question mark, you're so stupid that you don't even know you're indirectly spoiling me. I just want you to know that. You're not funny. You're literal, like you're, you're actually retarded. The amount of people that think, and, and then I have to act like I don't even know. That's the best part of this entire reaction thing, bro. The amount of sweaty neckbeards that think that they're funny and cool and want the attention by playing into the memes without realizing they're indirectly spoiling me. Like, you gotta be the stupidest motherfuckers that I've ever had to deal with, bro. ReZero already, we're starting off with such a poor, poor, like, reception. The viewership is high as fuck, for sure. But, like, every time we get into something new and people realize how fucking in-depth that I get into, motherfuckers from the deepest crevices of the mother's basement come out in full, just like, they all mobilize together, already unshowered for three fucking months and come here trying to talk about the fucking show and it's like, oh my god. I hate Isekai fandom so much, bro. I just wish we could just go back to fucking Demon Slayer, Unga Bunga Slayer, where we can just enjoy the fucking hype. Instead of having these pseudo intellects think that they're so smart and interesting and funny, bro. Just remember, I fucking think you're such loser, pathetic, disgusting beings. I'm not to let anyone else into- And you know what the best part is? I can say all this, and no one can talk shit. Because I'm still delivering the best goddamn reaction for this show on YouTube. If not, top five. I say this shit and you motherfuckers will still eat this shit up. Because that's how much effort I will give into this goddamn show. Just remember that. I think you're fucking weak, loser, disgusting weebs. And I'm gonna still give you the best goddamn content on top of that. ...to his place while she was finishing the deal. Yet, here was this stranger waiting for her inside. He even knew her name and what she stole without ever even meeting her. So it makes sense why she'd be at least a little bit suspicious. She decided she would only listen to what Subaru had to say if it meant it made her more money. That's why when Rama praised the cell phone at a higher value than the badge, she became more than willing to accept the trade. Okay. What does this insignia look like? Is that a bat? <laughs> Is it supposed to be a bat? <laughs> Wait, is it a dragon? It's some kind of monster, right? Let's see the insignia in the anime. Hold up. She'd be at least a little bit suspicious. She decided she would only listen to what Subaru had to say if it meant it made her more money. That's why when Rom appraised yeah. the cell It looks like a bat. It, it looks like a It looks like Golbat. <laughs> I don't know. It, it does. It just looks like Golbat, bro. Does it look like Quasa? I could see Dragon, maybe. Right? Because, like... The face of the dragon and like going around it. <laughs> I can't get Golbat out of my fucking face to look at look at the eyes. Is this supposed to be the nose? Is is this the nose of a dragon or is it <laughs> what, what is this shit? <laughs> I don't know, but the insignia is very important. Phone at a higher value than the badge, she became more than willing to accept the trade. Of course, that was only if his media was worth more than what her other client was talking about. Twenty holy coins. It had to be at least ten holy coins which was a value of currency that Subaru didn't even know existed. As he would find out, a holy coin was worth two gold coins. Damn, okay, we have copper, silver, gold, and then there's holy coins. 
which is basically 2x gold. Making it the highest denomination of coin in the kingdom. All right. For context, the badge was valued at around 5 gold coins. So the other client was willing to pay 4 times the price. Oh my god, Elsa. Elsa's design. She might have the best design I've ever seen in anime, man. It's, 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 it's I'm, I'm stumbling. I'm stumbling over my words right now. <laughs> she, she just, wow. Wow. <laughs> and like, that's the, and like, she loves our gut, right? She, she loves slicing Subaru's guts open and she also exposes her belly area. Price for it. Subaru's phone was worth it. Also, I just realized. Nice. 420. Nice. Price for it. Subaru's phone was worth double that. So, for now, he had the advantage. Eventually, the other client would show up, and while Felt was getting the door, Subaru and Rom would have a little heart-to-heart. -heart. Subaru felt he needed to express his gratitude since Rom had done so much to help him out. For some reason, though, his pride got the best of him again, and he found- What did you say, Annie News? I can't tell if you're trying to be subtle right now. ...needed to express his gratitude since Rom had done so much to help him out. For some reason- Wait, wait, go back, go back, go back, go back. ...and would show up. And while Felt was getting the door, wait for it, Subaru wait for it. and Rom would have a little heart to heart. Yeah? Subaru felt he needed to express his gratitude since Rom had done so much to help him out. For some reason though, his pride got the- His pride. His pride got the better of him. How many times have we said pride in this, ep in th in this video so far? Maybe two or three times. Bewitching Emilia, Emilia, Satella, Witch of Envy, pride. I'm just gonna be very careful in listening to these different trigger words that, you know, uh, alludes to- It's not even alluding, it's literally seven deadly sins, right? Subaru is a very prideful person. The best of him again, and he found the need to highlight that it was mostly because of his personal efforts. That made it a bit awkward for Rom, but Subaru still made it clear that he wouldn't have gotten to this point without the old man's help. Rom says to make nothing of it. He was just grateful that Subaru was trying to peacefully resolve the fact that Felt stole the badge. It seemed that Rom had come to the conclusion that Subaru was a thoughtful gentleman from a wealthy family. That's why he allowed Subaru to insert himself into the deal. Sure, he may have just been looking out for Felt's best interest, Aww. but- This is Rom and Felt when Rom took her in, cause like, you know, she's, he's pretty much like her guardian, right? You can't really fault him considering that she's pretty much his family. Anyway, Felt returns with Elsa, a young, beautiful woman who's- even better, more art, more Elsa art, baby. Let's go. Every movement gave off an air of eroticism. She, Though is she does, yes, it is exactly like that. That's what exactly everything she does is so erotic. I'm like, oh my god, every time she drinks the milk, bro. It was her pale white skin and dark black hair that stood out the most because those were features that were considered to be rare in this world. Pale white skin and dark what? Those were features that were considered to be turns with Elsa, a young, beautiful woman whose every movement gave off an air of eroticism. Though it was her pale white skin and dark black hair that stood Dark black hair, pale white skin. I mean, Subaru is basically kind of like that too, but okay, be this is very rare in this world. ...that the most, because those were features that were considered to be rare in this world. Okay. As Felt was explaining the situation, Elsa would occasionally glance in Subaru's direction, flustering him every time their eyes made contact. Towards the end, we know the deal goes in Subaru's favor, leaving Elsa with nothing but a look of disinterest. And then, like, we could have gotten away with it, right? We straight up could have gotten away with it. And then he makes the same mistake Rudy did during Turning Point 2. Motherfucker asked him a question, and he just proudly answered. Proudly answered. Since the fault was with her employer and not her own. Now, if she had lost the trade because of her own mistake, then that would have been a different scenario. But she was- He should have just said- he, he didn't have to say anything, right? He could have just been like, Ah, who knows? None of your business. I'll figure it out. But like, Subaru just was so confident and just was like, Yep, gonna return it back to the original user! And it's like, uh-oh, I see you've chosen death. I was willing to leave until Subaru foolishly answered Elsa's final question. The way she had asked him made him feel like there was no reason to lie. That was his mistake. You fucked his up. His answer triggered Elsa's murderous intent. Had Felt and the old man not quickly intervened, then Subaru would have died right there. Now, given the tight space they were in and the size of Rom's weapon, it seemed as if Rom had the advantage. I mean, there wasn't really much room to work with, yet somehow Elsa She's so nimble. in control of the fight. She quickly dispatched the old man, then moved on to Felt. Subaru knew that she didn't stand a chance. He wanted to scream and distract Elsa so that Felt could run away and maybe get help. 
even buying her time by sacrificing himself was much better than simply letting her die. After all, it was his fault that this was happening. But after coming to that conclusion, Belt had already left to engage Elsa. Her first direct Dude, strike blessing missed, of the wind. so she decided to try again from a different angle, using all the walls and ceiling as surfaces to switch her momentum. The animation there, bro, the blessing of the wind scene, she's like, oh, I see you're loved by the gods, bro. This scene was so fucking sick. The whole animation reminded me of Kaiju 8 finale. Uh, it's like the eyes being distorted as they move so fucking fast. Let's see that again. To Elsa so that Felt could run away and maybe get help. Even buying her time by sacrificing himself was much better than simply letting her die. After all, it was his fault that this was happening. But after coming to that conclusion, Felt Ooh. had already left to oh. engage Elsa. Her oh, that scene right there, dude. Missed. This entire sequence so good. Elsa. Her first direct strike missed, so she decided to try again from a different angle, using all the walls and ceiling as surfaces to switch her momentum. But even with all that speed, Elsa never lost track of her. She cut Belt straight through the chest. Does that mean Elsa also has a blessing? I don't know what these blessings really are. Just some random passive buffs you're granted because you're just born with it? It said you're loved by the world or loved by the gods or something, right? Sounds like it's just RNG. But despite that, she was still faster and reacted. Deep enough to show a clean slice through not only her bones, but... What do you think you're doing? Like, genuinely, what do you think you're doing right now? Did I ask that question? Was there any reason for you to even mention that other than you wanting attention from me? You want the fucking attention? I'll fucking ban your ass next time. Fucking figure it out, retard. But organs as well. So, with what was pretty much the only two threats down, Elsa... Like, I'm being very serious right now. I don't care if it's a boob joke. If you're gonna make it seem like it spoils, I don't give a fuck. That's a terrible fucking joke. Shut the fuck up and let me do my thing. The more you retards try to fucking latch out, try to be funny, trying to get some attention, the more I'm going to be pissed and fucking ban every single one of you. Let me do my thing and just sit back and fucking watch. This expression returned to what seemed to be its normal state. One of pure boredom. It was like nothing had even happened. This angered Subaru since the unlikely relationship he got to witness between the old man and Belt was now gone. It was as if, in the end, it was all completely meaningless. So, Subaru tries to... But Elsa said that, like, if you did this earlier, if you did not hesitate, maybe the outcome would be different. So maybe next time, Subaru will take that into advice, and, and then what? What's he gonna do? Is he big brain? Does, does he know how to, like, lead people? Is he a strategist? We don't- I'm not sure how smart this guy really is. Angered Subaru, since the unlikely relationship he got to witness between the old man and Belt was now gone. It was as if, in the end, it was all completely meaningless. So, Subaru tries to attack, but that just leads to him getting a broken nose, shattered teeth, and cracked ribs. The only reason he was able to- And then she shit on us, saying you're broke, you're stupid, you have no information, you got no skills, you're a pussy, you're a coward in the span of like three seconds. To get back up was because of the endorphins his brain released. Not gonna lie, he looks really cool here. The manga art of Subaru here looks really cool, like he's about to do some main character shits. To reject the pain. Somehow he felt better now though, but the outcome didn't change. His next attack resulted in him getting blown away again, leaving him with a broken shoulder this time. Subaru started to scream even more, not because of the pain, but instead because of the hopeless situation he found himself in. Elsa struck his jaw to shut him up, also removing most of his already shattered teeth in the process. Despite all that though, Subaru got back up. His determination was admirable, but unfortunately it was too little too late. Elsa was bored now. She. This is a terrible frame. Why did you draw her like this here? <laughs> I'm sorry. Th this panel is fucking stupid. She looks stupid in this one. He figured that it was time to finish the job. What the fuck is the lopsided eye and this nose here? That's getting fucked up by this line. Like, what are you doing? You just ruined her here. Bob and move on. She sunk into the shadows, hiding her presence and leaving Subaru unsure as to where the next attack would come from. All he could do was rely on the brief sounds that came from her light movements. By the time Subaru realized where she was coming from, he was barely able to sidestep the first blade. Though, going into- But he still got cut! He still got cut though! I thought we dodged that shit! Rely on the brief sounds that came from her light movements. By the-
It looks like there's two blades here. But that's simply the after image effect, right? Yeah, it's, it's the after image effect. Realized where she was That's one blade. How the fuck? She, I, what the air? The air cut his stomach or some shit? Coming from, he was barely able to sidestep the first blade. Though going into the counter attack made him vulnerable to her second blade. With his stomach now open, Subaru's pain could no longer be suppressed. He collapsed to the floor, screaming in agony. All while well, she had a second blade hidden. Like she swung once, but, that, but she's clearly dual wielding right now, right? Right and left, she both has the daggers. While his consciousness began to fade, it brought him to an all too familiar state. Yet, just as it was the first time around, he couldn't. Exactly, just like the first time around. And and like I know at this point, this motherfucker don't know. Like this is so slow. This is like like he traces back to memories. Oh shit, I died last time too, right? Like, like, come on, the second iteration, you still don't know? To help but to cower in the face of death. Numerous questions raced through his head, but that all led to a fear that he couldn't help but succumb. Just remember that any explanation of the anime that hasn't been explained in the anime is considered a spoiler. So I should ban you right now, right? I think I should. 53 messages. Following since August 4th. Of course you're a fucking new idiot. Get out of here. Come to. No matter how much he wanted to reject death, death... She said it? Did she say it in episode 1? Hold up. Did she say it in episode 1? Okay. Alright, alright. Alright, get out. Come back here. Come, come back here. How do I do this? Uh... Uh, one second. I'm not gonna ban you. How do I... On timeout? Is that a system code? Yeah, it works! System code, on timeout. Alright, fair, fair, fair. I didn't see it. Stole came, and so Subaru died for the second time. Bring us to a good end point for this episode of Cut Content. All right. As you can tell, the only thing this episode missed was very minor details. Still though. Hey, it's the sigil again. It's Golbat. This this is the beginning of episode one when there was the weird child choir going on in the insignia, right? That's that's, that's the insignia. This, this is the Golbat. This, the, there's the jewel again. What does that mean though? Tell the only thing this episode missed was very minor details. Still though, it helps to paint a better picture of the overall plot and development of certain characters, and I'm sure future episodes will have more major moments for us to highlight. Anyway, personally I'm a huge fan of ReZero, so I'll be doing a lot of content to cover the director's cut- Me too! The director's cut though? As well as even more once season 2 comes out. Is that why his cut content is kind of- I don't know, we have to figure out a way to not get spoiled and still watch this shit, but hey. This is Annie News. I'm sure y'all already know him because we all watch so many content from his channel. Please go like the video, sub to his channel if you haven't. We're going to be doing many, many more ReZero content to kind of just like go in in parallel of like the episode we're watching. I know that there's some spoilers, so like we're going to have to get ahead and rewind, but I'll figure something out. See you next time.